Good evening to everyone. If this is an example of the future to come and the way we give lectures, I have to say I'm not very enthusiastic. I shall much prefer your discussion of a question because that will create at least an element of dialogue and awareness of the other human being. Although I like talking, I don't usually like talking to myself. And this illusion of talking to a screen creates an odd sensation that one is alone with oneself in a moment of madness. But leaving that aside, I will try to speak now 10 or 15 minutes on the theme that I have been set. Um, this will be the shortest lecture I've given today since I've already spoken for about four hours, not continuously, but more or less. Um, let me start with a, a general point about government. Then I'm going to illustrate it, and then I'm going to say what underlies the set of problems we face today and the challenges we have. Once I've reached that point, we can have a dialogue about problems, the diagnoses, and possible ways forward in the future. Does that seem right? Yes. Good, thank you. There is a human being there. Good, excellent. I'm here. Good, excellent. Well, the point I want to start with is a point that I call the, the, pa the paradox of our time. And basically by this I mean that the problems we face, that is to say that humankind faces, are increasingly of a global nature. They're problems of huge extensity and intensity. And yet the means we have, that is to say the political capacity we have, to address these problems is weak and incomplete. And maybe have been at many points since the end of the Second World War. So let me begin by mentioning to you three major global challenges we face as examples of my paradox. The first and most obviously is the challenge of climate change and global warming. Today, King, the UK chief scientist, has recently said, and I quote him, that climate change is the most serious problem we are facing today, more serious than the threat of global terror. The science of climate change is fairly clear. There is an overwhelming consensus that climate change is happening at accelerating levels. That the level of carbon buildup in the atmosphere is growing and almost growing exponentially. In a sense, there's little we can do about this in the next 30 years. Because whether this happens, the lag emission rate is the atmosphere. So in the next 30 years, we have to adapt to this challenge. But unless carbon emissions are brought down, the 30 years after that will create problems for the month. But, and these are problems typified by violent storms becoming more frequent, we just had a torrential rain in London of a kind and form totally atypical. Water access will become more of a background. Rising sea level will, will displace millions. Uh, London uh, uh, has rising sea level of 10 of a growing uh, rate and challenge than anything that London has seen for the last two to three hundred years. As a result of rising sea level, the mass movement of the people will become more common and serious disease will intensify as a result of increasing temperature. So all in all, global warming and climate change constitute a very serious human challenge. And yet the needs we have of addressing it, the Kyoto Agreement and so on, without China and the United States, are very weak and inevitable. The second problem I want to highlight briefly are the Millennium Goals. The Millennium Goals set down a target by the international community for global poverty reduction, 
for the increasing levels of literacy around the world, for addressing AIDS, HIV, and many other important social indicators. Yet with the exception of China, we are farther away today in reaching these targets than we were some years ago. In many regions of the world, particularly Africa, the, one is, the situation is one of increasing deterioration and not meeting the target. And why does this matter? Well, it matters for obvious reasons, and I quote Kofi Annan in this respect. It matters because human beings will simply die unnecessarily, and in large numbers. Uh, there was a war following 9-11, because 3,000 people died. But indeed, 9-11 was a serious matter. Yet, every day, 30,000 children die of broadly prevent every day of broadly preventable disease. We have the means to address many of these. And the potential resource. But we can't deliver the right resources to the right place because we lack the political capacity. 